So with that said, uh, I'm going to dive into uh, tonight's class. We're going to talk about generically how to learn a new track, but then we'll go specifically into a pit race and uh, Ken will keep me honest, John will keep me honest, and anyone else who comes on who's uh, familiar with, with the track. So let me share my screen here. Um, <clears throat> so let me fix this for a second. Uh, so the slides for tonight uh, will be on the website. If anyone, I'll post the links on Facebook. If you send me an email and you want this, a copy of the slides, um, I will um, uh, yeah, send, send you those as well. So um, we'll get the copy of the slides out. There's also a more detailed set of track notes that uh, I've put together based on input from a number of people that have driven the track, including um, uh, the Allegheny PCA chief instructor. So uh, uh, if that link is, uh, there's a, a link to an earlier version on the website and I'll have that link uh, you know, later, uh, later tonight as, as well. So uh, with that, let me just dive in <clears throat> to kind of the, the uh, how do you learn a new track and the normal disclaimer that says, uh, if you try something that we talk about tonight and it doesn't work, it's your fault. So <clears throat> how do we learn a new track? Um, we'll talk a minute about how to prepare in advance classes like this, <clears throat> how to be, have the head in the right place when you arrive at the track, what's the sequence, some practical steps. And then most, many of you know, I'm a broken record about deliberate practice. And then we'll get into uh, pit race. <clears throat> so pre-event, uh, how to get ready. Well, starts with a track map. If you can't talk your way around the track, knowing the turn numbers, then you know, uh, you're not started. So got to know the track, got to know the turn numbers, got to know whether it's a left-hander or right-hander. And so track map is your friend here. You know, test yourself by talking yourself or someone else around the track and describe e each, of, each of the corners. Um, after that, um, start to visualize the track, you know, mental programming as Ross Bentley calls it, you know, close your eyes and drive, you know, a lap or more and open your eyes and then, um, you know, draw the map uh, and get yourself even more familiar. Uh, we have detailed turn by turn instructions. You can take a copy of the track map and you're gonna hear me say this several times tonight. I would print out several copies of the uh, pit race track map and have it available for notes. But as you're learning, it's a great place to make your notes. Uh, you know, uh, as you're going through the turn by turn, make your own notes on the on the track map so that uh, you know they're in your your own uh, terms, and also you're gonna you're gonna remember it better. Obviously, there's video you can look at, and I'm. If you haven't looked already, there's a couple of links that I'm going to provide. And if you are lucky enough to have access to a simulator, that's good. Although I understand iRacing doesn't have pit race on it. So, uh, um, so I'm uh, not aware of, of access to a simulator. But these are all things can be done in advance. And I highly recommend it for a track, you know, that has 19 corners uh, in three miles, you know, you know, just showing up and expecting to learn it is probably not a great strategy. So I'm happy to see people on this call and on the call we had uh, had last week. So <clears throat> when here's another option or a, a variation on that strategy uh, from a different source. And uh, this uh, uh, driver coach, you know, suggests starting with a good video, studying a lap, and then watching that at half speed and making your own notes, um, you know, like the messy notes that you see on the uh, on the chart here, and you know, do that enough time so that you can you know reasonably accurately draw the track, and and then 
train your feet. You know, watch the video at real time speed and move your feet around on the brake pedal and the gas pedal and try to do that in sync with the video and do that enough times so that you can match the video. And you can do that sitting in any chair. You don't have to be sitting in your car. And, you know, I have not tried, had time to try this, uh, but it seems like a reasonable strategy um, for, you know, accelerating the, you know, not just the brain part, but the physical part of driving on the track. You can also use your hands, obviously, if you wanted to, but he emphasizes that getting your, your feet in sync is, uh, is perhaps even more important than, than the hands. And by the way, anyone's feel free to jump in and ask questions if you have any questions or make any comments. <clears throat> when you get to the track, um, here's some advice in terms of having your head ready when you get to the track. This comes from Dennis Mascio. Uh, some of you heard him speak at our December Zoom session last year. Uh, he's now the chief instructor at Monticello, but uh, was the chief instructor for many, many years at Bertel Roos. And so um, <clears throat> this is advice he gave those of us who showed up at Palmer at one of the early events at Palmer when nobody had really driven the track. So he says, be open-minded, you know, Trust your instincts, trust yourself, know how much risk you're willing to take or not take. And most importantly, probably be patient and be methodical. If you heard him talk, you heard him emphasize how this is an analytic sport. You really have to approach it in, in an analytic uh, sort of a way. And you know, don't be in a hurry to you know, go fast, go slow, get that mental picture that he called it a visual photo of the track. And to do that, you know, on the first day, you know, break early, break lightly, you know, work on getting the right photo, that mental picture of each, of each corner, you know, avoid herd mentality, misinformation and gurus and including me, right? So develop your own view of what works for you on, on any given track, and in this case, pit race. So, and I don't care which corner you wanna talk about and which track, if you're gonna learn a corner or every corner on a, on a track, <clears throat> these are always the priorities. Uh, exit speed, um, entry speed, and then braking. So, <clears throat> you know, that means we wanna work on exit speed. Now, in some cases we have connected corners. So it comes down to the exit speed from the last one of the connected corners. But uh, don't try to go into corners fast. Try to figure out how to come out of the corners quickly. And once you figure that out, then you can figure out how to get into it fast. And last and least, you know, how to break late. Um, the, this is, you know, Skip Barber 101 stuff, which most of you, if not all of you probably know. So here's some practical tips and steps. Um, I don't know how many of these help at pit race, but um, they apply to other places. You can categorize corners. If you're used to other tracks, you can think about, well, are there any corners at pit race that look like turn one at Watkins Glen? Well, I don't know whether there are or not. Maybe a turn 11, I'm not sure. Uh, are there fast corners that only require a little bit of break? Not much trail break. Well, turn 16 for sure. We'll talk about that. Are there long corners with lots of trail breaking? Absolutely. The 5-6 the complex, the 17-18 complex for sure. Are there compromises, connected corners? Absolutely. Uh, turns 7 through 11, 12 through 14 fit, you know, fit that category uh, for sure. <clears throat> Estimate your reference points. There's going to be cones out, but you know, figure your own out. Start with a very late apex, one arc, and only after you figure that out do you start worrying about, you know, elevation and camber and curbs and so on. And and then just iterate. Again, this is Dennis Mascio telling telling us how how to how to learn a new track. I didn't make this up. Um, this is you know what. He, he coached us to do it at uh, Palmer 
And I, I think it's dead on. Now, deliberate practice, if those, those of you that haven't heard me say this before, deliberate practice says how you practice, or in this case, what you choose to do when you go out on track, how you approach it is much more important than the amount of time you do it. And we wanna do it in a focused way with clear goals, a plan, and, and, a, and a way to monitor. I'm not gonna take the time tonight to go through this, but um, <clears throat> I have sequenced this slide, which I hadn't done in the past. If you're on a new track, learning the track is obviously step one. Reference points, what's the track surface telling us, you know, what, what are the safety features, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, it, oops, sorry, this went the wrong direction. Um, <clears throat> I meant to go here. So traffic, obviously, you know, what's happening in my mirrors, where are the passing zones, what would I do if I have to drive straight off, all that kind of stuff. And then as we get better, we can worry about, you know, how hard are we on the brakes, you know, how smoothly we're releasing the brakes and all the rest. And last, Ross Bentley sensory input sessions um, are, are good things. On the website, there's not only the track map, but there's the deliberate practice notes. Um, and if you can't, if you want a short, if you want an email with links to everything I'm talking about tonight, send me an email and I'll send you a follow up uh, to tonight with the links to everything that we're talking about. And I'll uh, put my email in the chat so that uh, everybody has it. But um, some people had trouble finding some of these things on the website. So um, I'll make it easy. Um, I just put my email in the chat. So uh, send me an email and after the session, I'll send you links to everything. But I don't care whether it's pit race or any place else, th this is great technique, but it's doubly useful in, in learning a new track. Okay, get this to move. So <clears throat> to wrap up, how do we learn a new track? We approach it as a learning challenge. You know, we prepare as much as we can ahead of time. You know, keep the ego in check. Um, don't assume that corners are the same, and and that doubly applies at pit race because there's a lot of uh, corners that are not like most of the tracks we go to. Focus on getting that mental picture, that mental photo in your head of what each corner looks like, uh, because until you have that you can't really drive the track comfortably. As you are working on corners, as I said before, prioritize the exit, then the entry and, um, and, and last and least breaking. Um, once you've started, you know, make adjustments, see what happens. Uh, that's where the deliberate practice really works. Keep those, you know, make, make notes on your track map after every session you come in and you know, figure out which corners worked well, which ones didn't, what you did, didn't do that, uh, that worked. And obviously we wanna keep it safe. You know, we're here to learn, you know, we're not here to go fast until we learn. Can't go fast until you really know your way around the track. So a uh, typical you know, approach from a DE perspective, no surprise, but as I'm gonna talk about in a bit, you know, there are corners here that deserve a lot of respect. So um, questions, comments on how to learn a new track before we dive into the specifics of pit race. Okay, all right, we got a couple people still coming in. Okay, all right, so pit race turn by turn. Uh, <clears throat> first thing I wanna note that, you know, as I said before, print out a bunch of track maps the Speed Secrets track map that's on the website, which is designed for notes, uh, especially if you print it in, in landscape, it gives you plenty of room for notes. Um, it has turns five and six mislabeled. Uh, it's not a big deal, but you know, five and six are the 180 degree turn uh, at, at the bottom of the track map and they're five and six are not in the right place uh, on, on that map. So, um, so, everything that I have on the slides tonight and in the notes, you know, deals with five and six in the correct place, which is 
five is the first half, six is the second half of, uh, of that 180 degree turn, okay? All right, <clears throat> passing zones. Um, the, th there are a number of passing zones here. Uh, you know, the one is quite short, uh, but we've designated each one as mandatory. Um, and, and so the ones in, on the pit side of the track, if you will, pit lane and the front straight, those are mandatory left side. And this is no rocket science, right? The next corner coming up is a left-hand corner. We're gonna pass on the left. Um, the rest of the passing zones are next corner coming up is a right-hand corner. We're gonna pass on the right side. Um, now, this, the, the zone between 15 and 16, you know, the line crosses the track there, but 16 is a right-hand corner. And uh, based on what I've learned talking to the chief instructor at Allegheny PCA, um, the recommendation is, even though it'd be possible to give a pass on the left coming out of 15, the recommendation is, you know, uh, it works much better to require all passing on the right side between 15 and 16. So uh, we've done similar things at other tracks. So, um, so nothing too surprising here, but, uh, but be aware those are the passing zones on the track. The, the zone between 11 and 12 is pretty short. So that's one of those, if there's a fast car behind, you can send them by. We will allow expanded passing uh, in, in red and black, at least maybe not on the first run. Craig and I haven't discussed that uh, in detail, but, uh, uh, but eventually we certainly will. Um, but as Craig likes to point out, there's a lot of places, cases here where in expanded passing one could pass, but it would make no sense for either driver to give or take a signal. So, um, so we'll figure that stuff out uh, as, as we get there. Questions, comments here? Got it, okay. So <clears throat> the links I give you will have some reference videos um, and I'm not gonna, uh, <clears throat> well, maybe I will, I'm looking at my clock here. Um, let me see if I can play one lap of this first one. This first video <clears throat> that I'm gonna play is a reasonable video to get a sense of the track. The problem is the audio is not totally in sync. And even though I've done my best to correct it, um, it's still not perfect. So we'll see if this will play. Uh, and uh, oh, hold on, I got to fix one thing. Uh, come on. Okay, let's see if this will, let's see if this will work. Most things it worked when I tested on pit road at uh, pit race. Can you uh, all hear give you, uh, an introductory lap to the track okay, for those you those of you who have not been here before? For the regulars, this will simply be a review of the uh, braking zones and apexes. As we approach pit out, observe the blend line. Keep left of the line or right. Don't cross it. Breaking zone for three. Lane apex, nice and smooth. Stay out for four, late for four. That's it, late, late. Back on the throttle. Headed to five, set yourself up in the middle. Hard brake, nice and tight. One turn of the wheel, don't move it, don't move it. Approaching turn seven, late brake, late apex. Eyes left for turn eight. Hold the wheel, let the car run out. Turn nine, same thing. In tight, you're setting up for 10, which is blind. 
Lead apex, let the car run out. Eyes right, second curve. Turn 12, nice and tight. All we're doing at 13 is setting up for 14. Come in, hold the wheel, don't move it. Our track's left, comes back to the right. Apex, heading to 16. A little bit of break, back on the gas. Hard break. Turn 17, same thing, one turn of the wheel. Turn the wheel and don't move it. One big arc. So that's one lap around uh, um, pit race. Okay, um, <clears throat> we'll we'll go that we'll go go through that slower. But uh, <clears throat> just to, for those of you that haven't seen a video before of the track or haven't seen it before <clears throat> to give you some sense of what it looks like. If it looks like there's a lot of up and down and blind corners, then uh, you've reached the right conclusion. So it's a track that I'm told rewards smoothness and finesse. Um, a lot of late apex, apexes and late turn-ins. So rewards patience. Um, <clears throat> there are, there probably is a little bit of variation on where the apexes are and the detailed notes have, you know, some, uh, a few of those noted, <clears throat> but like most tracks, a number of the apexes are fairly long. It's more like a zone. We want to be either against or on the curb um, for some distance. And uh, Ken pointed this out to me that, you know, <clears throat> you want to use the curbs here. The, the apex curbs are friendly and in many corners, we want to use them. Uh, the same is not true for track out, but the track out curbs, but the apex curbs are friendly and uh, we want to take advantage of that. Um, people that have been at the track tell me that um, at first turns in eight and 10 look very similar. Um, they're, you know, it's hard to tell them apart. Same for seven, nine and 11, all right hand turns that come up in you know, bang, bang, bang. So, um, and turn 16 is the fast kink, deserves great respect. We'll talk more uh, about that as we go through. Okay, so <clears throat> turn one, <clears throat> um, you know, is on the front straight. It's blind as we, as we approach it. Um, we, we have to break in the hill before we can ever see the apex. So we need to break early, especially as we're learning the track. <clears throat> the interesting thing about turns one and two, I'm told, is that basically we turn in for turn one and it's a fairly quick corner. Um, and it's one arc that carries us all the way between turns one and turns two and all the way you know, to the apex of, uh, of turn two. And we want to apex roughly the beginning of the curb uh, in you know on the left side there in, in turn one. <clears throat> As we approach turn one and and the videos, the, the stills I have from videos here, thanks to Ken Ernsting and to Eric, um, you know, we you know we've got some reasonable views of what it looks like. So here's approaching turn one, the beginning of the brake zone. You can see the four marker, you can see the car up in front, <clears throat> just not almost to the end of the braking zone, no view of the corner yet. And up here at the end of the, you know, approaching the end of the braking zone, we still can't see the apex, right? So this is blind. Um, and maybe even at the turn in, you know, it's hard to see the apex. Um, <clears throat> but we want to apex the relatively early part of the curb. And uh, in fact, um, this is Eric in a Formula 2000 car, and uh, this is done before the track was repaved. 
I don't know whether the curbs are longer now or not. I, I couldn't tell, but notice, you know, he's very early in using all the curb. Um, so um, we, we want to be in here. But <clears throat> turn two is just a continuation of that arc. Um, but it has the serious wrinkle that pit out is on the left side here. And in fact, the apex is the, is the middle of the blend line. So those of you that are used to Watkins Glen and, and cars pitting in, that we're apexing this just like you would apex turn 11 at Watkins Glen when a car's in uh, entering the pits. In other words, we can't cross the blend line. Here, we can't cross the blend line, even if there is no car inside. So um, we'll, I'll show you pictures of that. And after turn two is another passing zone on, on the left. <clears throat> so here is the blend line uh, on the left uh, in turn two. And, and that's the apex. You can see, it, well, no, this is, you can't see it here. Here's another view from Eric's car, you know, right up against the blend line. You know, if there is no car coming out, then, you know, we can get up close to it, but we're not supposed to go across it, is my understanding. <clears throat> Here's what it looks like if a car is pitting out. Okay, so... Now, now we're apexing a fast corner. This is a fast corner. And we have a car entering the track at a much lower speed. So, and, and so if, if you're the car pitting out in this circumstance, uh, you would be best advised to stay all the way track left, all the way to turn three, um, to let the fast, any cars on track at speed go past you on the right. Um, so, <clears throat> um, so that's turns one and two, three, four is another complex uh, at the end of the uh, front straight here. Uh, it's another uphill uh, entrance to the braking zone, another blind corner. Um, a very late turn in, I'm told, either at the cone or maybe even after it for some people. Um, and a, a late apex. And then we wanna stay track left just briefly here to set up turn four. So uh, somebody said a couple of car lengths. Uh, one of the videos I, I posted says count a thousand and one, yep. you know, after you apex turn three before you gently turn the car to the right for turn four. Um, and then apex that the middle or toward the end of the curb. And one steering arc will take us through turn four to track out then back to mid track, which is where we want to be to head down the hill. Because at this point, we're headed down a steep hill and, uh, and it is a passing zone on, on the right side um, as we go down the hill here. Hey, Bill. Yeah. On turn four there, um, a good reference now is in the middle, uh, uh, the position on the track where you start that downhill on turn four, yep. there's a patch of uh, new asphalt there. Uh -huh. And I typically try to drive my car right over that. And that kind of seems to set me up pretty well. It, which side, right side or left side of the car, John? Well, you, it would be, well, it, it would be just off of the curbing where the number four is. So it actually would be almost right where that red line is. Okay. You'll see a small patch of asphalt that they replaced. And, and that tends to be a good marker for me where I want, when I start my turn down the hill. Okay, great. Perfect. That's great, John. Yeah. And could we go back to turn one, two for a second? Sure. Okay. Um, when you're coming into turn one and you take that early apex, as you start to track out, you see where those dotted line is, where the, the old north track is right there? Yep. If, if you set that up right, you'll come through, you'll carry your arc right over that triangle. There's a fresh piece of asphalt. It's actually on the far side. It would be on the other side of that mark. Okay. It would be right here where it's it's still green here where the arrow is right there. That's been re-asphalted. There's a oh. section there. Okay. And your arc would come through there, pick that up. You then take, and I just put my tire on the blend line, and then you track out again. Now, the only other thing that wasn't mentioned there is there's a pretty, there's a, there's a hump there as you approach turn two. Yep. 
and the car gets really, really light. So I typically try to get all my, sh- I, I, right now what I do is I take, I take a gear going into turn one and then I just carry that even though I probably could take another, you know, take another gear. I decided that it's just not worth messing around with that hill. Cause when you come up over there, it's light. The car gets really light. Okay. All right. So that's, that's as you're exiting turn yeah. one, right? As you're, uh, as you're approaching turn yeah. two, right? Right after the blend line. Okay. Oh, after the blend line. I got you. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Okay. Justin, so for, can you hear me? It does, it does get light, but there's no reason to get out of the gas. <clears throat> Maybe uh, Kurt and the GT2 uh, might need to shift early or do something like that. But I mean, it's not anything like Line Rock. It definitely gets light, but it's not like Line Rock. Okay. Okay. So this, this is the hump you're talking about, John, right? Yeah. And it's, if you go in, like a lot of people try to bite off the, the blend line. That's been a big issue at our track, right? They're really fighting us on it. But some guys would come in and basically just take that whole section of the blend, right? And, and it never made any sense to me because then you got to try to readjust your position on the track right in the middle of a hill. It, it's, I, I don't understand why they do it. The, the, for me, the ideal position is to come in and I just set my, my left front tire right at the right at the arc of the blend line and then that yep. just tracks it that just takes me right out to the other side yep yep where the, yeah, that's, where the south track uh merge point is yep that's that's my understanding as well okay All can right. you guys hear me yes yep. this is rob steffi hey on that that uh top where you're talking about the the bump there i try to make sure all my turns done that way yep. it really doesn't matter you got your wheel straight it's light but you're not trying to steer then at that point yeah and i think if you apex where you're supposed to along the blend line coming up the hill you'd be pretty much straight it's right? seamless right? correct it is yeah. exactly yeah. yeah if you get it right you should be straight over the the hump okay all right okay okay i'm just making a note okay great okay great input guys thank you um okay so back to three four three four um so uh, you've given us, John, you've given us a good reference point in the middle of the corner with that apex, the asphalt patch. So that's good. Um, and as I said, we're headed downhill toward turn five at this point. Um, so here's, you know, some, here's approaching turn three, you know, the beginning of the brake markers, um, you know, as we get up to end, end of the braking zone or, approaching the end of braking, the apex is still blind. Uh, after we turn in, we can see the curbing. Um, you know, you can use the curbs here. Um, Eric used a lot of the curb um, and looks to me like if, if you want, you can use a lot of that curb. Um, but <clears throat> we want to stay track left, as I said, you know, briefly uh, before we turn down the hill for, for four at this point. Um, and then um, you know, apex this curb. It, John, is that a- asphalt patch about where the cone is in this? No, it's um, it's going to be probably just above the brake light on your dash. So if you were to go up, oh, up right, oh, right up in here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. And and so for me, turn three is almost a throwaway kind of turn. I, I try to get as much speed off the car so that I can tuck up on the left side and extend that straightaway as far as I can. So sure. some of the other drivers, Rob might be, I know a lot of the high horsepower guys like to come in a little, a little hotter, like straight at the turn and then try to turn and then just get back on it. So they take a more of a direct approach at the, at the curve, at the turn. I split. I split the road. I don't do it far, far left, but I don't, I don't cut it off completely. Right. Okay. All right. Well, it's certainly three is certainly you know, only there to set up four. So yes. it's, you know, there's no, and so trail breaking as much as you can into three makes sense. Uh, and then it's a question of how well can you set up turn four? Um, so um yeah. So, but it definitely a compromise, um, no matter which way you look at it. I think the, the goal I have coming into three and four combination 
is whatever I need to do to get back to throttle as soon as possible to exit four. Right. That's yeah. that's the best way to say it, I think. Yeah, well, that sounds right. Yep. Whatever whatever you can do to, yeah, like I said before, we want to maximize exit speed, right? In this case, it's maximize exit speed out of four. So how fast can we get back to full power and then back up from there as to whatever works to get to there, right? Um, and it would be secondary to figure out, okay, how late can we break going into turn three? And as late as you can break going into turn three and not screw up your exit from four. That would be the answer, right? Um, right? Okay. Okay. Good. Good stuff. Okay. Down the hill. Well, turn four apex, another view of the apex. So five and six <clears throat> uh, at the bottom of the hill here, for those that haven't been there, the bottom of the hill here, as we turn into five, my understanding is the lowest point on the track. Um, and we've come down a steep hill. Uh, as we come down the hill, there's an electric tower off in the distance, uh, kind of on the right. And there's this dog leg on the left. We want to ignore that and kind of go straight uh, down the hill. And uh, this is another, this is an increasing radius corner. So, you know, we have to slow down to get into it, turn. And, and this is another place where we just hold the one arc and uh, and feed gas on uh, and all and takes us all the way up the hill um, uh, out of six and back to kind of mid track to go up the hill towards seven. So we came down a steep hill coming into five. We go up a steep hill exiting six uh, up toward uh, up towards seven. Um, and and as we exit six, it is a passing zone on on the right side. So. This is what it looks like going down the hill. And you can now you can see the dog leg, you know, you know, alongside the white car in front here. And, uh, you know, we want to ignore that and just kind of continue this straight section down the hill in, into, uh, into the braking zone. Um, <clears throat> it's like I said, it's a long apex starts, you know, somewhere in the middle or, you know, middle first third or so of the, of the curb, and we want to follow that around up the hill. Um, another view, and um, and now we're headed uphill. So as we start to track out, you know, now we're going up a steep hill. This is one of those corners where everybody wants more horsepower except Kurt. So uh, uh, Kurt will have enough horsepower to go up this hill, <laughs> but uh, uh, the rest of us will want a lot more horsepower going going up here. Is uh, is my understanding. Um, so at the first part of that turn, turn five, you have a lot of compression. So you can you can really get a lot of G's in that first part of the turn. But but then you think, well, I'm going to get back the throttle. And I saw a lot of cars coming out of six uphill spin off track left. You lose some grip on exit there. Just be aware of that. OK. All right. Yeah. I, in fact, I, I had a 914 spin in front of me for the exact same reason coming up that hill. Interesting. Okay. Okay. All right. Go on that's like similar in type of elevation to toe of the boot. Steeper. Maybe not, maybe not quite as much, but it's 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 longer than coming out of the toe of the boot. Maybe not quite as steep. I think it's steeper. Really? Well, maybe it's. I, I Maybe it's because the length, uh, you know, makes it seem not quite as steep. But yeah, it's it's steep. Yeah, yeah. I I, I was told it was steeper, but it's you know, but it 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 whether it's a little less or a little more, you know, it's a it's a steep hill that's going to soak up a lot of horsepower. But I appreciate the comment about losing grip because it because it kind of makes sense, right? We have all that compression that's helping us, and then even if the track it is either flat or bank slightly here as we lose that compression then we're going to lose a fair amount of grip and especially if you're not unwinding the wheel a bit if you're trying to hold one arc um, i can see where that uh, would be an easy way to lose a car yeah what it doesn't have and this is where we shouldn't with especially with um intermediate drivers should not compare it to the toe of the boot because there's you don't have nearly as much camera to work with as you do coming out of the toe of the boot okay Okay, so turn six exit. Okay, got it. Okay, 
that's that's good input because uh, it was that wasn't apparent to me. Well, the amount of camber wasn't. I couldn't tell from everything I've seen, so that's good to know. Okay, um, so <clears throat> seven, eight, nine, uh, and are the S's, uh, although it seems to me like 10 is part of that too, but um, regardless, you've got a right, left, right, left complex coming up. And uh, it's after a fairly long stretch where we go uphill and then downhill. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. But uh, tur turn seven is, you know, is a hard break, but a trail in to seven, because it would be possible to drive turn seven a lot faster, but then you'd be totally messed up for turn eight. Be possible to drive turn eight faster and be messed up for nine. Be possible to not drive nine faster and be messed up for 10. So this is a series of corners where, you know, we're compromising the way the way we get, get through them. So, but certainly seven, we want to trail in because, you know, we're, we're coming in at a good clip and it's not a terribly slow corner from what I can tell, but um, but we're going to slow down, might as well trail in and uh, at about the two marker um, and and then apex mid curb and hold it or apex a little bit later. And and then, you know, turn eight, apex mid to late curb track out in that case to mid track, because if we go all the way track right, we will never get back to track left for the setup for turn nine. And, uh, and as we go through this complex in general, the apexes get later and later and later. So to the point where nine, we wanna be near the end of the stripes, turn 10, we wanna be at the end of the apex curbing. Uh, so apexes get later and later as we go through this complex. If you were gonna call any turn a sacrifice turn through there, in my opinion, it's eight. Okay. You know, seven, maximize your speed, throw away eight and get ready for the nine, 10 combination. Okay. That's good input. I assume that, that that's based on the fact that nine and 10 are a little bit faster than eight. Yeah. Also because you're, you've now extended your speed coming into seven, the whole way to eight. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Good. I like it. So this is approaching turn seven. Um, you can see the brake markers. Um, you know, you know, apex, you know, middle or or later in this curb, kind of hold it a little bit to set up eight. Um, you know, again, you can use the curbs here if, if you want. Um, <clears throat> eight, you know, somewhere between the well, somewhere in the second half of of, of the of the curb on the apex. Um, as I said before, we want to track out to roughly mid track so we can get back to track left for, uh, you know, to set up turn nine. And I'm, Ken tells me, and, and from what I can tell from other people that generally most cars aren't going to need a break here. You may need a lift, um, you know, to set up these, these corners. Um, um, and unless your car, you know, struggles to turn in, which you might, you might want to tap the brake to help it turn. But I think most cars, you know, are uh, are not going to need brakes through here. Just just a lift to uh, get the nose, uh, some weight on the nose to help it turn. Um, now, apex for nine is, you know, near the end, you know, you know, that last full white stripe roughly. Um, and you know, you can see here, Eric's, you know, where he is on the end of the curbing here. Um, now turn 10, <clears throat> it continues that complex. The difference is it's totally blind. And uh, and so somebody said, I think it was Bruce Grubman said, you got to feel your way to the apex here uh, since we can't see it uh, until we're well into the corner. Um, and this curb we want to touch at the very end. and we're doing that partly so we can get back to track left to set up for uh, for turn turn 11. Hey Bill, on this particular turn, if you end up track right, 
the camber falls off the other way. Ah. And, and it, you collect a lot of debris on the track there. So if you get stuck on the right side of that turn, um, it can get a little dicey. Okay, well, that's good input. Okay, I did not realize it was off camber. I knew, I knew that it, if you got out there, it was hard to get back to track left, but that's, that's addition, an additional reason not to go out there. I agree with them so much that if you get out there, it's hard to possibly stay on the track. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, and, and reasons to, to do a really late apex, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. So what does that look like? I think it might now to work here. Um, so as we approach turn 10, uh, and from what I can tell, uh, you guys that have driven it, is, is the turn in roughly uh, where the old track or the cut through comes in or at, at this first cone or where, where is the turn in here? I would say at the last or next to the last turn, depending on how you want to take it. But I always take, I go deep on the right side before I turn down. Okay. All right. So, so it would be either the last cone in that section or the next to the last cone. In that section. Okay. All right. So, all right. So turn that in equals... Okay. You can actually go on to the other uh, service road there. Oh no, no, no! I just use the cones as a reference. I stay, I stay on the on the track. Okay. I just, but there's always cones there, and it's just a good reference point. I pick one, and then that's the one that I use as my reference. Okay. All right. Because yes. it is blind. There's nothing to see on the left, so you got to find something. Right. Yep. Yep. Well, that that's why I was asking. So that's good. So it, as we do turn in, you know, we still can't see anything, right? Um, right. And until you get well around and now we're at the apex and now we can sort of see what's going on up in, in front, but whoops, let me back up. So this is, you know, so the apex here is at the, you know, depending on who I want to believe and what I've, I've read, the apex is the very end of this red and white curbing, or maybe even just past the end of that. curbing. Yeah. You'll um, see the grass is tore up at the end of that curbing. Now that's a good sign. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe not a good sign, but it's yeah. a sign that that's where we that's where everybody's going, right? Yeah. But but the closer you are to that curbing through that whole turn, the better the camber is too. The further the further you get out, like you said earlier, it just keeps falling off and off. It 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 gets really bad about a car width off of that curbing. What it feels like to me. Do you agree, John? Yeah. Well, I just I just stay away from it. I don't care yeah. if I, how late I have to turn in. I'm not going on the right side. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. So now we're kind of tracking out mid track to set up 11 because as, as, as you guys just told us, we don't want to go out for any further to the right here and we want to get set up for, for 11. Um, so this is what 11 looks like. <clears throat> uh, the cut through comes through here. So there's actually two sets of, of curbs, but, we want to be from track left. And as I understand it, the apex is sort of the middle of that first curb and then all of the second one. Um, and we don't really want to uh, uh, hit the track out curbing here. I'm told it's quite rough. Um, and I don't think there's any reason to be out there either anyway. Um, so, <clears throat> so here you can see the two sets of curbs up, up ahead. Um, here, you know, we're lined up with that second uh, curb. And clearly, if you can just look at the black marks, that's where everybody's driving. Um, and, uh, and, and now <clears throat> we're, we're, you know, we're approaching turn 12, uh, which is another compromise corner that leads to 13 and 14. And uh, we want to be fully left, um, you know, um, perhaps can use the flagger as a reference point to, to know when to turn in. But the key thing here, I'm told, is to keep the eyes up the hill to the right, because there's a steep hill that 13 is sort of at the top of. Um, it's actually the highest point of the track, turn 13. And uh, so we want to apex 12 at mid curb or later. And this is a sharp, sharper corner than it looks like. And you can sort of see that from the diagram here, or maybe not. You'll see it in the photo in a minute. But this is a corner where we don't want to track out too much or too soon. 
because we really want the track out to pretty much be the apex of 13. Um, so we, we and 13 is a compromise we can't track out from 13 much because we need to stay track left exiting 13. So uh, so we really want to get to 13 with the car under control so that we can stay track left uh, to set up 14, that, that which is much faster that follows it. So, uh, so a complex of corners here where we're sacrificing 12 a bit to set up, uh, up 13. As we approach 12, you can start to see the hill on the right uh, here. And uh, now you can get a better idea. And we definitely want, you know, the eyes up, up the hill on, on the right. Um, you know, here, I think this um, perspective gives you a sense of how sharp this corner is, because we're approaching the apex and the corner is still wrapping around in front of us. So, um, so th this corner, um, you know, 11 is, much quicker than some than it appears is what some people have told me. Twelve slower than it appears. So um, you know, at least at least from first impressions. No, on, on my impression of the sketch that you showed before that, and even looking at this this line here, I I try to straight I try to get lined up a little more parallel with the right side of the track. There, I I think that if you get mid mid track or left mid track, then it jams you up on thirteen when you try to come up up and make that left-hander i agree oh. okay so so we don't even want to go mid-track i i try to stay right side of center so i i want to put my tires pretty much in the center my left tires on the center of the track and try to stay right of center okay okay got it so left left side um, okay which which if you take turn 12 a little bit later later easier to do that yes yeah. that's so I think the turn in on the sketch and the turn in with this driver here, it just seems like they're both early to me. Okay. Well, that, that kind of, kind of makes sense um, yeah. to me. Because um, the most important thing is as you're exiting 13, you have to be on the left side for the most part, because if you get stuck on the right side, there's no way you can make that right hander down the hill. Right. Yep. Yep. Okay. Good input. Good input. Uh, that may, let me back up just to the diagram for a second so we can all look at that again. Yeah, because they, they show the diagram here, which I did not draw, by the way. No, um, I think uh, so, um, so, yeah, you, you're, you're saying you, in this section here, you're further over to the yeah. right side. Yep. And trying to straighten out my, when I clip that apex at 13, I want to be heading towards the left side. Before yep, you. yep, got it. Okay. Okay. All right. So, so speaking, well, there's See, apex. he's a lot later there. Yep. Yep. So yeah, he's aimed straight up the hill at 13 at this point. So, yep. Um, so here's turn 13 uh, as we approach it. Um, I guess I, I thought I had another picture, I guess not, but, uh, but it makes sense since the track is still bending left here at 13 that, you know, we want to be, you know, setting it up by being as far to the right as possible so we can exit this thing to the left. Because exiting 13, I mean, ex the exit of 13 is the bottom of this entrance to 14 here. And so we, ha as, as John, as you just said, we want to be staying left exiting 13 to set this up. Because 14 is a fast corner, right? We're going downhill, we're getting Very. speed, we're feeding gas on. And fast downhill and off camber. And It'll push the last you right thing out. you want, yeah. The last thing you want to do is put put any input into the car uh, once you start down that hill. You got to just go with whatever you went in with. Um, if you lift, you break anything. It's a mess. Okay, I didn't go I over would... the curbing. Use the curbing there for yep. sure. It actually gives you a better uh, uh, position on the track as far as uh, camber. Okay. I was not aware of this off camber, so that's good. Good to know. Uh, I, yeah, Ken had said you want to be on the curbing here as well. So, yes. Um, so okay. Yeah, in fact, in my video, I missed I missed that turn very badly. So I said, "Don't look at where I am. Look at where you want to be." Yeah. Right. Um, 
yeah, so I think the the picture I have in a minute, when Ken told me when he sent me the video, he had missed this one. So uh, so I don't think I have a good shot there, but. Uh, um, uh, but Eric's wheels uh, yeah. up on the curbing. Yeah, no, it is. I think I think I have that here. Let me see. So here's 14. This is exiting 13. And yep. not notice the turn in cone on the left here. We can't see a thing, right? I mean, this is very blind and very downhill. Um, and even after the turn in, you still, you can't, can't, see it. still can't see the apex. Uh, so it, it is, uh, it is hard to see. And yeah, this is, this is to Ken's point offline. Uh, you want to be in much closer on the, on the curbing here. Yeah. So here's, here's Eric um, in on the curb on 14, you know, like, like we want to be right. Um, so <clears throat> That's 14. And what we want to do exiting is, you know, track out and then just hold the arc and that'll bring us back track right uh, to set up 15. Is uh, it, um, somebody described this as a lazy slalom, just to you know, let yeah. the car track out to the left and then come back to the right. Um, and, and you don't have to go all the way right either. You could just get to the right side. But you don't have to track on all the way to the right side. Okay. All right. Because okay. 15 is a pretty easy corner. In fact, so you can, yeah. back to 14 for one second. Um, that is one of the turns that is, uh, from what I've seen, off track incidents, that's probably up in the top tier of the turn that you end up off track with. It, it, it occurs a lot. Okay. So, and it really comes down to missing missing the turn and getting pushed off to the to the left of the track. Is what yeah, happens. I think what happens is people start to run out of track and then they lift and then they lose their rear grip because it's all it's it's an off camber situation yep. and then and then they go into grass and then it's over. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, yeah. From what I was told, it's either it may be third most dangerous, but second or third, but. Uh, but certainly a corner that deserves a lot of respect, given everything, yeah. everything's working against us, right? We're going downhill, it's off camber, et cetera, and it's fast. Yeah. I'm curious <clears throat> which one they're calling the most dangerous. I'd call it 16, but I'm yeah. curious what they... No, it's six, 16 for, by, by a mile. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, this one, if, you're, if you turn in late, it's, it's an easy turn. It's a nice turn, right? It's just as you start to optimize that arc is when you start to... Right. Put yourself in a position. Like I said, and if you run out of track when you're trying to track out, that's where the problems come from. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, this corner done properly is pretty quick, right? So, yeah. um, and yeah. So, if you are trying to go faster and you don't execute it properly, uh, yeah, I could see, you know, getting into trouble real fast here. Um, so, that's 14. 15 is. Um, approached from track right or a little little bit into that. This is pretty much flat out in most cars is what I'm told yes. once you figure it out. Um, but use the curb here, right? This is another corner drive right over the curb. The front um, end of the curb. The, oh, the front end of the curb, okay. The leading edge, the first one yeah. part of the curb you see. Okay. Turn 15. Okay, I'm making notes. Uh, uh, but um, <clears throat> obviously not flat out for those of us that have never driven here before, but uh, once you figure it out um, and uh, I'll adjust this to be the leading edge of the curb. Um, and this is followed by a passing zone. This is the passing zone where, you know, once we track out, you know, if there's a car behind, we'll want to go track left and give a signal on, on the right. And turn six, well, here's approaching turn 15, pretty much on the gas here, assuming we've executed properly. Um, you know, here's, here's the apex curbing, which we want to be right up on. Um, and I guess I didn't have any other picture. I thought I'd know the picture of 15, I guess not. Um, so 16, this was the one I was told is the most dangerous turn on the track. Uh, it's fast. And if you don't execute it right, um, you're probably going to hit something pretty hard. Um, um, and 
you know, it's going it, to, it, it needs to be set up and uh, executed properly. So um, what can happen, I was told, is that if someone gets to the corner too fast, they may all of a sudden get nervous and turn in too early or too quickly. And uh, that's not a good equation here. So the solution here is to break in a straight line, pretty much slow the car down, aim at the second half of the curb, drive on the curb, and then feed the gas back on. Um, but, you know, it's not a corner to get into fast. It's not a corner to trail break a lot into, um, you know, because we're going a ton coming into this. And once we track out, you know, we can be back on the gas for, for an instant before we have to get to the brakes uh, for turn 17. So we want to be on the gas to plant the car through here, but then we got to be, pre be prepared to, to break. But yeah. Uh, Bill, on this turn, if I'm instructing, I will not ride in a car with a student that doesn't brush brake into 16. If yeah. he's not touching the brakes at 16, I'm, I'm getting out of the car. Yeah. Well, so that's kind of the, what we do with all of our students there is, is make them touch the brakes. Yep. Just enough to set the front end and then turn and then they can get on it again and they're okay. So, yep. Yep. I agree. Positive throttle through the turn. I'm going through that turn at 120 ish mile an hour, but I still brush the brakes before it too because I want to get just, just settled down a little bit so I can get back to better throttle through that turn to keep the car yeah. planted. For Jim and Ken, this sort of reminds me of the kink at Thunderbolt. Yeah. Yeah. So it's one of those turns that at least. Uh, when I was there, you, you never get 100% comfortable with, which is probably not a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. From what I've been told, that's probably not, I think that's exactly right, Ken. Um, deserves any consolation. The owner of the track wrecked his car there. So, <laughs> oh, okay. The weekend I was, out it. Yeah. He totaled a car there. Yeah. The weekend I was there, Corvette went in hard. Yeah. Yeah. I was told that probably. You know, he didn't have statistics, but 70, 80 percent of the yeah. serious incidents at pit race happened here. Yeah. Um, and so. Um, so, yeah, deserves a lot of respect, because if you do make a mistake here, you know, it's going to be hard to uh, get away without hitting something. For I, keep... and I was just thinking of another turn, which is the Kinket Road Atlanta, which that works. If you, it also works if you do a brush with some left foot brake. Does anybody do that here? You could certainly, you could certainly do it, Craig. Uh, it also is like the kink at Road America. Uh, sorry, that's what I mean, Road America. Sorry, I misspoke. Exactly right, because th there it's like, I tried brushing, I tried doing this, but a little bit left foot brake allowed the car to be better balanced. So I'm not recommending that except in obviously probably the very best drivers, but. Right. Well, the problem there is there's no room for mistakes. So unless that's not where I would start practicing my left foot braking. Um, right. It's, and yeah, yeah it's, the, the picture doesn't show up, but there's a walls on both sides. And usually when there's an incident there, you're kissing both sides. Like it's, 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 it's violent. It's, it's, I keep saying I want to get a shirt that just says respect the kink because that's the one that'll end your day. I think there's one of those that wrote America. Yep. Yeah, there is. Um, yeah. Well, um, that, that's what you just, what you guys have just been describing is what I was told by uh, um, um, it, as well. So, uh, which I did not fully appreciate when we did this session a week ago or a few days ago. So, um, so, um, yeah, um, uh, deserves a lot of respect. So, <clears throat> and by the way, you can't see it, you know, until you're halfway between 15 and 16, right? Uh, cause there's a little rise in that stretch. So the first view you get, you know, is coming over that little bit of rise, um, after fifth, after 15, <clears throat> here's, here's the apex curbing and, as everybody has been saying, you know, use all of that curb, go right over the, the second half of that curb like that, right? Um, that looks about right, uh, right on, on top of the, on top of the curb. And then, um, whoops, 
So anyway, that's that's 16. Oh, the other thing I want to point out in this picture is that you can see turn 17 up ahead. In fact, you can see brake markers, you know, even starting. So you're going to be back on the gas. You're going to be on the gas hard at this point, <clears throat> but, you know, not for very long um, because you can see 17 isn't that far away if you're going fast at, at, at this point. So 17, 18 is another uh, increasing radius, slow in, fast out corner, you know, you know, same idea as five, six, but different topography. Um, uh, I was told this is the second most dangerous corner on the track in terms of actual incidents collecting cars. Um, um, but, and that's because people don't slow down enough. Um, this, this corner can be exited quickly on lots of power, uh, but it cannot be entered super fast because turn 17 appears to be pretty tight. Um, and so definitely lots of brake, slow the car down and then, you know, turn it in, get along that curb. And then once you're along the cur apex curb, I'm told in most cars, you can pretty much put your foot on the floor because we're going up a steep hill coming out of here. And, and so we can just, you know, in most cars, turn it in, you know, get the car turned and plant the gas. Uh, and it's another one steering input kind of turn. You know, one big arc uh, takes us uh, out, um, you know, out of 18, uh, up the hill, uh, you know, onto the front. Um, so uh, <clears throat> here's the braking zone, um, turn in, uh, long, long curb here that, you know, we're going to run along for, for a while as we feed the gas on. You can see the black asphalt patch in this uh, photo, which obviously shows you where cars have been, uh, you know, been running on the track. Um, you know, we're on the gas. You can see now how the track's going uphill. We're just feeding gas on to go up, up the hill as we track out of uh, 18. I'm told the track out curb is pretty rough here and it looks rough in the in the photo as well. Um, so no reason to be out on the curb here. Uh, 19 is not a turn in the sense that it's kind of full throttle, um, but uh, it does set up the, the front straight. But it, it, important for those of us that haven't been here to know that the pit in is, is inside a turn 19. So as we're coming out of 18, if a car is pitting in, they're going to be giving a, sim, a pin in signal. They need, they're obliged to stay track left exiting 17, 18, and cars staying on track are going to pass them on the right. No signal required, but, uh, but as long as the pit in signals out and the car pitting in is track left, uh, you know, coming up the hill here because you can, whoops, I guess not. You can, you can see that pit in is here and, and the, there's a wall separating that from turn 19. So there's no passing in this little stretch here coming out between 18 and 19, except for cars entering, entering the pits. And then here's the pit straight um, that uh, after we, uh, after we exit 19. Uh, and that takes us up to turn one that we already talked about. So, um, so, uh, just a couple of notes, just to restate the obvious for those of us that haven't been here, uh, you know, focus on learning, you know, late turn ins and apexes, then adjust long break zones. Um, and it, in this um, pit race in particular, it appears to be very easy to be early and off track on some of these corners. If you're, if you're early by, by more than a bit, you may well be off track and, especially since some of these corners look similar at first, uh, you got to really be patient. Um, so I'm going to be a broken record again and tell you to use your track map and take lots of notes. Way to go, Bill. Thank you. Um, and uh, uh, and as, as, uh, as Craig mentioned before, those of you who have been here before, we're going to put an X on the back of your car. So those of us that 
haven't been here, you know, can uh, can follow you uh, around the track. So, um, so with that, um, questions, comments, uh, additional thoughts. And John and and Rob, thank you both very much. I really appreciate the uh, the uh, the input. I'll be in a very obnoxious, loud green Corvette. But if anybody wants to, for the first session, wants to get behind and, you know, do it at a medium pace, um, please just come talk to me. I'll, I'll do that for anybody that needs it. Okay. Well, well John, uh, Rob, I'm sorry. I, I'm sure people will take you up on that. As Craig uh, mentioned, we're going to, for the first half hour on the first morning, we're going to do an all a, a 30 minute yellow session uh, just so those of us that haven't been there can get familiar. But we are going to try to get folks like yourself in front of, you know, what five, four, five, six cars, whatever, so that we can follow you at a reduced pace, learn the track, um, you know, the basics of the track. Um, and uh, but then if you know, uh, if we do see you later in the session, we see the X on the on the back of that green car. Then we'll uh, we'll we'll know uh, you know where you're going compared to some of us, right? So good. Okay, Tom. I, Tom, I don't know if you've uh, gotten the okay for a track walk from uh, pit race, but uh, I'm sure Eric would be happy to do a track walk if uh, it can be arranged. Yeah, we, we did get the okay, so we could do it on uh, Monday night. No problem. Okay. Good. Oh, great. Good stuff. Okay. All right. Good. Bill, Bill, Jim Moore here. Thank you for your lesson tonight. I also tuned in Monday night for a lesson and I learned a lot on Monday. I learned even more now. So if you do three more, three or four more of these, I really have a good handle on the track. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I second you'll, the motion. You'll, you'll have to uh, listen to the recording, Jim. So, uh, um, I'll need I'll need another track map though. Well, that's <laughs> why they're that's why they're there to uh, print out print out a lot of them, right? I've I've marked up three so far, and uh, that doesn't count the notes on my computer. So, uh, um, so yeah, but we're all going to need you know a lot of track maps that it, that haven't been there before. Uh, uh, so, the other thing about the track is it's it's just absolutely gorgeous. You could just see. The, the quality of the work that the owners put into it with all the buildings they put a new administrative building in they put a new uh, timing uh, building in it's it's just nice air conditioned bathrooms it's just nice you know so um i, I agree you guys will really enjoy it yep we just need to move it closer to new jersey that's all <laughs> Um, but no, I, no, I, I've heard the same thing. So uh, we're, we're those of us that haven't been there are really looking forward to, uh, you know, driving it and and the experience of the track, which I've heard from several people the same thing. That it, uh, it's just you know first first rate all the way in terms of the facilities, the track, the whole the whole nine yards. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anything else before we wrap up? Oh, good job. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. Very nice. All right. Uh, thanks so much. Thanks, thanks, Bill. To John thanks and Rob for attending, for folks. Comments. All right. Anyone that wants links to anything from tonight, send me an email or watch the Facebook group. And, uh, um, and um, we'll have the recording from tonight, the slides, and uh, detailed track notes, which I now have to go update based on inputs from... Uh, you know, from uh, job, John and Rob, but uh, as soon as I have those updated, I will uh, have those links available as well. So uh, thanks again. I look forward to seeing everybody, uh, uh, well, less than a week from now, right? So uh, uh, Monday morning or Sunday night at, uh, at Pit Race. So see you there. Very good. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks.